Now that the trade deadline has come and gone and the custom roster is fully updated and good to go, feel free to check out the editing doc in the description if you haven't already, it can only mean one thing, a new series is upon us. And what better team to use than perhaps the most discussed team of this NHL season? They're still not drawn, they're a bunch of jerks as far as I'm concerned. Bunch of jerks or not, the Hurricanes have been a major talking point for the first time in nearly 13 years. And if there's anyone that can lead a bunch of jerks to success, it's the biggest jerk of them all. Me, I guess, wait, what? Now, first things first, this is very much going to be a setup episode. We won't be making any progress whatsoever, just so you know. The reason for that is we have a lot to discuss as there are a lot of changes being made for this series, and I want you all to have a chance to give your feedback before we truly get things underway. To start off, I mentioned it already, but we will be using my custom roster for this series. I've done videos on it. I have the editing doc that I've already mentioned. If you know me, you know it's kind of my thing. That document has a list of every change that I've made to overalls, potentials, every added in prospect, all 200 or so of them. So feel free to check that out. Again, the link is in the description. From there, I want to mention a topic of discussion from a few weeks ago that occurred during a live stream of the short-lived Oilers series that we ran a few weeks ago, whose sole purpose really was to kill time before the trade deadline. And that topic of discussion is difficulty in franchise. Now, obviously, as that series and the even shorter-lived Duck series showed, without rules and restrictions, franchise mode is extremely easy, which is why I asked you in chat during the stream and in the comments of the video once it was posted to YouTube to give me suggestions on how you would make things more difficult. And that's exactly what you did. Now I've taken a lot of what was suggested and come up with rules and guidelines that should make this my most challenging series to date, at least one that isn't solely dependent on draft RNG like the Seattle Sea Cattle franchise. Check that out if you haven't already, by the way. So that brings us to the true beginning of this episode and this series, which involves a whole lot of explaining, although everything I'm about to mention will also be listed in the description. So let's get going with this, shall we? I'm going to take you step by step in the setup process of what we have going on here. And of course, the first step, I mean, you already know. It's, it's going to be interesting with the Hurricanes as it is. They're an interesting team with a very interesting goaltending situation. But with Carolina, Ajo, Teravine, and Justin Falk, even if he kind of got burned in the yeah, Bruins game <laughs> that just happened, nothing like making a timely reference that'll go over well when someone watches this playlist a few months from now. But let's let's get down to this regardless. No more, no more banter aside. We have way too much to get to anyway. I want to start off with the morale system, actually. Before we talk about Unamud, I want to start off with player morale. It will be on for this series. Now, me personally, I don't view it as a challenge to have the morale system on. For example, in the Vegas Golden Knight series that we just ran, the morale system was on. We still had a team of multiple first-line talents that were all fine and happy because you can balance it with power play and penalty kill time. It's really not that difficult to manage it. You really have to screw up to really, you know, end up in a bad situation with the player. That said, though, a lot of you guys think it'll make it more difficult. The morale system is on. I want to make note of this, too, even though I can't change that setting from here. Injuries are also going to be on. Now, normally when I have injuries on in a series, People complain because it involves that much more micromanaging. So normally, for the sake of a YouTube series, I have injuries off because it involves less, you know, downtime and it's not as tedious. But again, people think it'll make it more difficult. Injuries will be on. Fog of War will be on with the exception of player role for the sake of being able to see if the AI actually needs help in a trade. So I won't be able to see their overalls or potentials but if I look to move a defenseman, I'm going to want to make sure that that team could actually use that defenseman so I can then go ahead and see, oh, well, they already have six players who are top six defensemen or above. They really don't need that player, and thus I won't be making that move. But Fog of War will be on, which, of course, is going to make a drastic difference in the way we approach free agency, the way we approach signing players out of the draft, 
and in numerous other aspects. Next thing I want to talk about is owner mode. Owner mode is going to be off, primarily because I'm not going to have GM firing be on. While it adds to the challenge, I don't want to risk the series potentially ending prematurely. As it is with owner mode, revenue only really affects the scouts, but of course I'd set up the budget to make sure I had the max scouting budget anyway, or we'd set it to the minimum, depending on what you guys thought was the more challenging approach. Relocation isn't going to be a factor in the series, but there is one aspect of owner mode that I want to keep, and that is the primary goal at the start of the year. For example, I could load this up right now and the game could say, hey, I want you to get a first round pick this year. I want to keep that aspect of it. So what I'm going to do instead is have you all set a primary goal for each season, just like we'd see if owner mode was on. Odds are we'll end up doing the most liked comment at the beginning of the preseason, so just before a new season begins. If we hit that goal, no punishment. If I miss the goal, there will be a random punishment. These would be open to suggestions, but for example, it would be another wheel spin. There's going to be a lot of wheel spins in this series, by the way, so if you don't like me adding the wheel to the Finland series, you're really not going to like this series. But say with different percentages or working things out examples of punishments would be losing a draft pick which once i get to talking about how i'm going to handle the draft in this series you're going to realize that's a big deal i have to trade a random player randomly buy out somebody now you see where the percentages would come in maybe we'd have a lesser percentage of hitting random buyout but if we do it would be that much more devastating again there's a lot of room for debate on that but i absolutely want to keep that aspect of it of having to hit a goal every season and if we fail you know then we fail and we end up with a punishment if we succeed there's really not much we could do i mean we could say like hey you get an extra seventh round pick or something i don't know really i'm not necessarily you know i'm not necessarily on the side of i need to have a reward for being successful my reward is still being in charge of the team and not having a punishment but let me know suggestions for the punishment like i said the three i thought of lose a draft pick have to trade a player for undervalue and randomly buy somebody out i'm sure there are others that would be somewhat interesting in the meantime i do want to get all of that set up all of that's good let's go through this before i talk about everything else that is going to happen we're not done yet not yet by a long shot but again everything i'm talking about here i'm going to leave the full list of what i'm mentioning to you in the description so as far as the gameplay is concerned we're just going to go on the basic full sim stats injuries are on we'll put the period length on to 20 authentic cap penalties are going to be on 25 years of course difficulty on superstar now draft pick ownership this is one thing where a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, you're using your custom roster, so what did you do about draft picks? And again, the answer there is nothing. If you're using EA's most recent roster update that came out after trade deadline, they do technically have draft picks where they belong. The issue with that, though, is conditional picks were a major theme to this year's trade deadline. So technically, EA's roster isn't even correct. I'm going to leave this on authentic for the sole purpose of, at the very least, having the Ottawa Senators' first round pick be with the Avalanche. You could put it on classic if you wanted to. It'll stay on authentic, but just keep in mind, for example, the Rangers won't have an extra first round pick or whatever, thanks to Kevin Hayes or whatever other deals happen at the deadline. Trade difficulty goes on to hard, and again, Fog of War is on with the exception of player role. I absolutely need that on for the sake of being able to do what I want with trades, which again, we'll get into in a moment. As far as the injuries are concerned, minor league assistant coach is on, auto rotate is on everything here is looking good i want to walk through every step of this so that there is no like oh well you didn't show this setting maybe this is happening not saying people have accused me of that it would be dumb for them to do that but you get the point like no there's no there's no debate it's right here all the information's here and in your face so again all of that is fine none of these sliders matter including injury occurrence that's not just my opinion that is from talking with the dev team none of these sliders have an impact unless you are actually in the game so and again uh, i tend to believe them because i've done my own test this year putting every shooting stat to 100 and every goalie stat to zero and yeah no it didn't make a difference so <laughs> everything is going to be staying the same on that front with the exception of when we jump into 
the gameplay, say we make it to the playoffs and we want to jump in, I want those strategy settings to be all the way up. That way maybe the AI play is just a tad bit smarter. Aside from that, though, everything's good on that front, and we're good to officially get this show on the road. Again, there's so much more to get to involving the draft, trade rules, and free agency. Those are the big three where you're really going to see a lot happen. If you think like, oh, morale, injuries, fog of war, and the owner challenge, you know, the goal at the beginning of the year, if you think that's where it starts, oh, 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 we haven't even gotten started yet, honey. Not even close. Still got a long way to go, which is why I'm very excited for this series. So let's take a look here at what we are dealing with. First and foremost, I do want to go back and double check through the settings to make sure everything is good to go because the rules tab has something a little bit different. The only slider that affects gameplay is penalties. It's the only one that affects the gameplay. So I'm gonna put that up to four to try and generate a little bit more offense in terms of power play goals to try and get goal scoring up. I recommend you do that as well. Penalties might be a little bit unrealistic, but of course it's nice to have that slightly higher scoring. So we're gonna work with that. And again, everything else should be good to go. It's really weird how that penalty slider only shows up under rules and how you can't do that from the other menu. You have to wait until you get here. I don't understand why, but there you go. Everything is looking good. Yep, everything's looking good. Sweet. So let's get to the major, major stuff of this, shall we? I want to start with the draft rules. Although, actually, let's start with what, uh, let's start with how we're going to build the team, okay? Let's start with that. Because what we are going to do is we're not going to be able to play players below their current role. So what I mean by that, quite obviously, is for example here. Now, of course, you might agree with some overalls and potentials. That's fine. That is what it is. Again, it's my roster. You don't have to do it that way. For example, Curtis McElhaney is not going to be allowed to be played in the minors. He has to be the starter or the backup at the very least. A better example is defensively. Dougie Hamilton cannot be a third pairing guy. He can be a second pairing guy or, you know, a top pairing guy. He can be a top two defenseman. We cannot play him on the third pairing, if you get what I mean. So as it is, we're already going to have a little bit of trouble with the defenseman that we have. TVR, of course, could be played wherever except in the minors if you get that. That's another little minor thing that I wanted to add to it. The draft rules, though. This, this is where the fun really starts. So right now, we have a lovely eight draft picks. That is not allowed. We are only going to be allowed seven draft picks total. Seven. That's it. No more than two picks in the same round, though. So what I mean by that is, for example, I have eight picks. I would have to get rid of a draft pick. It doesn't necessarily have to be that extra second round pick. I could get rid... I, actually, in fairness, we have an extra sixth round pick, too. I can't even count. We have nine picks there. It's, it's late. I'm sorry. But you get the point. Seven picks per draft, no more than two picks per round. So if I wanted to, for example, I could get rid of that extra sixth and that extra seventh round pick. I could have two second round picks. I could have two first round picks, but only seven picks per draft, no more than two picks in an individual round. So I'm not allowed to have three second round picks. Here's here's the real here's the real kicker. I'm gonna be a big fan of this one. Again, we are covering draft rules at the moment. Allow me to view the draft class. I have to pick from the next few people in line, either according to the scouting consensus or the general consensus, the central scouting rankings. So if we were drafting right now, number one overall. I am only allowed to pick between these seven players. I could also sort it by scout rank once we get to that point. So I am not going to be allowed to be like, oh, okay, we're in the third round right now. Or here, you know what, let me scroll down, right? So we're right here. These are my seven. 
I'm not allowed to be like, oh, but a little bit down here is a medium elite goaltender. I'm not allowed to do that. I am only allowed to pick from the seven players that you see on the board there. However, I'm allowed to trade up once, and I'm allowed to trade down once. You get it? Hopefully it's not too complicated. You'll see it better in action once we are actually in a draft. Those aren't the only rules, though. There's still one more. So to recap, right? To recap this, we are only allowed seven picks per draft. Those would be the seven right there. I am not allowed more than two picks in a single draft. I have to pick from the people in line. I can trade down once. I can trade up once per draft. Again, though, the rules of only two picks per round at max is in play. And here's the real kicker. You want to know why it's seven? I have to pick one player from each position, and I also get a free pick. So every draft, center, left wing, right wing, left defense, right defender, goaltender, and a free pick. So, remember what I mentioned earlier about a punishment if I don't hit the goal for the season being losing a draft pick? That basically means I lose my free choice. And now you see why that is so much more devastating. So again, seven picks per draft, no more than two picks in the same draft or in the same round per draft. I have to pick from the next few people in line, no scrolling down. I can only trade up once and trade down once. So basically, if I don't see anybody in the seven that I like, say it's in the second round, I can trade down if I want to. That includes trading down to next year, of course. Um, I can only trade up once and, uh, of course, picking one player from each position and getting that free pick. That seventh pick is, okay, I can select whoever I want. Those are the draft rules. We're still not done. Like I said, this is by far the most restrictive, the by, uh, by far and away the most rules I've ever had in a series. And I normally don't like to have the series be overly complicated, like Nations United, Draft of Glory, those are easy to understand. I want to challenge myself on this one, though. Let's get to talking about the trade rules. And number one is more of a general rule, but the trade has to make sense for the AI. I'm not going to be allowed to I'm not going to be allowed to abuse broken trade values. Basically, if I wouldn't if I was the other GM, right? We're get, we're doing a deal with the Ducks. I sit here and I'm like, "Oh, I want to add in this medium elite goalie who's 22 and a 62 overall and is clearly not going to make it. I'm not allowed to trade him for a second round pick because if I were the Anaheim Ducks, I know that goaltender's not going to make it. So fuck you. I'm not going to give you a second round pick for that player. Every trade I have to honestly answer it, and I will. If I wouldn't take that trade, if I was in charge of the other team, I'm not allowed to do that trade. That way, there is no abusing broken trade values. And that way, too, the trade has to make sense for the AI, which is why I mentioned wanting the player role to be active. So, for example, with the Anaheim Ducks here, if I wanted to make the deal, I could at the very least say, oh, okay, I want to move a defenseman. How many defensemen do they have? Clearly, they could use another defenseman, at the very least. Yeah, they could use another couple of defensemen. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm good to go. No problems. We'll make that deal. But if I wanted to make a deal with the Boston Bruins, and I look over at their list of defensemen, they very clearly do not need another defenseman. So we wouldn't be making the deal with Boston. I am more than likely, as well, only going to be trading players two teams that are interested in that player to make the most of the value. So basically using the trade block on every deal to try and make it happen. And then of course going in and making sure that the trade makes sense for the other teams. I'm going to try to protect the other teams as much as I can. This next rule is a big one. I am only allowed to pick up one AI draft pick per trade. No longer can I say, be like, hey, here's a third round pick. I want a fourth, fifth, and a sixth round pick. Not allowed to do that. I am only allowed to pick up one trade. Even if it's realistic to say that, oh, I want to trade my third round pick for, you know, my third round pick at the beginning of the draft for a third round pick at the end of the draft and a seventh next year. Not even going to do that. One AI draft pick 
per trade. That is it. And if, and if, and this is jumping ahead, but if a player is on the last year of their no movement or no trade clause and we are out of the playoffs, we are allowed to spin the wheel to see if they'll waive the clause to go to a current playoff team. That brings me to free agency. I really hope this isn't too much, but it might be. It seems like a lot when you explain it, but really it's not that bad. When it comes to free agency, at the start of every year, one signing for each position. I am allowed to sign one forward, one defenseman, and one goaltender on July 1st. They can be a current talent, or they can be a prospect, but one of each. I will be allowed, though, to fill out the roster at the start of the preseason or later on in free agency with no restrictions. So if we need to sign a couple of players, I am allowed to sign a Chris Connor and Andre Benoit to fill out the roster, and they do not count. I will mention as well, if we end up rebuilding, there is no limitation on me signing someone to $15 million to make sure we're at the cap floor. Just going to throw that one out there right now. Now, the wheel that you have been seeing in the finish series is going to be a part of this series as well. We are going to have it replicate no trade clauses and no movement clauses. A no trade clause, we will be doing a couple of different things. So, for a no trade clause, if I sign a player from anywhere between $2.5 million and $5 million per, we spin for a no trade clause clause. The first spin will be to determine the amount of years for which it's active. So again, if it's a six-year contract, we will spin the wheel. If it lands anywhere between the one and the six, that is how long we have to stay loyal to that player. I mean, technically, it could be anywhere between one and eight, depending on who we sign. So again, if it lands on a three, we have to stay loyal to that player for three years. The second spin is to determine the amount of teams that would be on that player's no-trade list. So what we would be doing for the no-trade clause, again, $2.5 million to $5 million. First spin of the wheel would be to determine the amount of years that we have to stay loyal. Second year would be to determine the amount of teams on that player's no-trade list. Looking at the real-world NHL, the least amount of teams on a no-trade list is 4, and the most is 20. Haha, ha. funny. So what we'll be doing is spinning the wheel. And whatever number it lands on is the amount of teams on that no team or on that player's no trade list. So it could be four teams, it could be 20 teams, could be any team in between. And in terms of who they can't be traded to, we would go in reverse order in the standings just to make sure that they don't get sent to a terrible team. Now, we also have the no movement clause, which again means that they cannot be traded under any circumstances and they cannot be sent down unless it's in the final year of their contract and we you know, spin the wheel, they waive their right and they go to a contender. The no movement clause in this series will be $5.25 million and up. The only spin is to determine the amount of years of the contract that we have to stay loyal to them. Does that explain it all? I hope it does. I hope it all makes sense. I hope I was concise enough and was able to fully explain everything. Again, you can see all of it in written form in the description. And again, hopefully it all makes sense. The rules will be in the description of every single video. It's going to take a while for me to get used to it as well. Again, by far the most rules I've ever had in a series but I feel like we're putting restrictions in the right place where we need to to make this as difficult as possible. And in the next episode, we get things underway with an instant issue of having too many defensemen for what we are looking to do. So odds are we're going to have to trade somebody in this group there is also the topic of discussion as far as how do we stay loyal, how do we decide to stay loyal to players already on the team, or whether or not I should have complete freedom to move them if I want to. But do not be surprised if you see a Calvin DeHaan, granted in real life he just signed, maybe a Dougie Hamilton gets moved, and we bring in a third-pairing guy in a draft pick. 
Don't be surprised at that at that at all. And then forward wise, thankfully, it is pretty straightforward from the looks of it. I don't think we're gonna have any major concerns. We might actually could be a very big deal to start things off because we can bump up one third line guy to the second line, then the third line is set, but the fourth line we have one player too many. So do not be surprised to see someone in between Martinuk and Manalainen get traded alongside one of our defensemen and potentially a goaltender. If I can swing that, I might just keep all three. Actually, technically, yeah, I'd have to get rid of a goaltender as well. There are going to be instant roster changes. I'm going to end it there because that is a lot of information to digest. But again, hopefully it all makes sense. In the next episode, we get things underway with what will have to be an instant trade so that we can follow the rules. Although, let me know what you think in terms of how, if at all, we should stay loyal to the players already on the team. Should we just go by the Hurricanes' real-life no-trade, no-movement setup right now, which is actually something I can find fairly quickly is with the Carolina Hurricanes we are dealing with. Actually, do they have any? Hold on, hold on. The only player right now on that team that has a no move or no trade is Jordan Stahl from the looks of it. And thankfully, that's actually, that's pretty bad. He does have a no move, a full on no movement clause. And so, I mean, we could do that. I think Jordan is the only one that we'll factor that in with, and I think we'll start off the next episode with a wheel spin to see how long I have to stay. Well, actually, in fairness, I mean, he has a no movement clause for the rest of his contract, so Jordan Stahl is going to be here for four years. Maybe in that fifth year, if we are not a competitor, I'll be able to trade him at the deadline. But get ready to see Jordan Stahl. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. Guys, I am ending this one. God damn, this is going to be interesting. I am so scared to see the reaction to this because I don't know if I've overdone it. But I feel like that's I feel like it's, I feel like it's going to be a good thing. Maybe. I hope. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you next time. Can't wait to see your feedback down in the comments below. And again, if you're new around here and are somehow like, holy shit, this sounds great. I'm going to stay. Check out the other stuff we got going on. The Finland series. Of course, we ran a series with the reborn California Golden Seals and the Vegas Golden Knights earlier this year. Hence why right now we have two Eastern Conference teams going on. I'll see you in the next one. I hope at the very least. Let's see how this goes. Ugh. I got to win with a bunch of jerks too. And that bitch didn't mean a thing to me.